Joffrey Renly Rob Stark are all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. Crude metal tapped against the wood of the desk as they waited in the council chamber. Winton's eyes went across the room, his constant weary gaze looking through the gathered council. All of them had arrived, bar one. It was strange looking around the council. While the Lord of the Father's Fields was used to the constant change of this council, in recent times it had certainly been a far more substantial shift than in the years before. Winton had made it a habit to be early to all these meetings, to observe the comings and goings of other council members, so he had gained a fairly good profile on each of them. Lord Royce prided himself on his victories, being loyal to a fault, rather remarkable that a man choosing king over blood. Lord Theobald Anvil, one of the newest additions to the motley gathering, had no intentions of surrendering his seat back to Lord Enkar, hoping that his illness would take him. What men said after a little too much wine was remarkable. Lord Redfort looked up to Florian and viewed him like a father, being somewhat insecure of his position, though that was rather obvious to everyone in the council. He also knew of the rather poor reputation that Maester Simon held compared to his predecessors, though he was still a man of the Citadel. He was merely far more resolved than those before him. Septon Robert had been the most critical man of the faith that Winton had ever met. It was fascinating, especially considering the history of his own house. And then there were the advisors, Guy Mudd and Brandon Stark. Once both ancient first men kings, worshipping seven gods and kneeling to an andor. And yet, Lord Brandon especially took some pride in his position, and had a loyalty that Winton only saw in men like Mance Chainbreaker before him. All of them were fascinating in their own right, yes, but from all of them, the two most vital components were missing. A king needed a hand, and both were not present at this time. With these thoughts crossing his mind, the doors burst open as a lone figure entered flanked by two king's guards. Their armour did not reveal their house crests, and so Winton could not tell who they were. Most telling was who they accompanied. Not the king, but his brother, the princely hand, Enger Sevenstar. That was disappointing, and Winton nearly knew the rehearsed words fully by now. My lords, the king will not be attending today's council. The tone was different. This was not due to Florian drinking himself into some drunken stupor, had this to do with those recent dreams? The shift in Florian had been obvious, and Winton had pressed the matter then. Enger continued his speech. He is ill, nevertheless, I will be leading this day's council, and we have several matters to discuss. Members of agreement and a prayer from Septon Robert were heard, as Enger joined them at the council chamber. Winton leaned slightly forward, his good hand intertwining with the metal one he had made. Enger raised a letter with a broken wax sigil, the rings of Morgath pressed into the red wax. This came some days ago. About time that this was discussed. Winton had gotten the news weeks earlier. Lord Morgoth has disposed of House Rack for control over the Warrior's Way. Now laying claim to the title, he asks for legitimization. The wood heaved slightly as Danies Roy slammed his fist into the wood of the table. No! While House Rack has shown itself weaker than most, we cannot allow another house to usurp titles without hesitation. We cannot have another Danies Corpry or Hugh Royce happen. Theobald Anvil chimed in then. I must agree with Lord Royce. The Veil vale has shown that allowing such madness to run rampant is an ill-advised idea. Winton's eyes looked towards the Redfort Lordling, who was uneasy about speaking, but both Vale Lords clearly hoped that he would join their side in the discourse. The Firehand Lord spoke up at that moment. He had his own hatred against the Rax, and he could not have this. His eyes turned towards the Vale Lords and Prince Enger. My Lords, I understand your worry. Danies Corbury is a cautionary tale for us all, one we must not allow to repeat. That is why our great king has stopped any attempts of expansion against you from his successors. His eyes shifted on Lord Royce. Such is your land, my good lord. House Rack has proven itself to be aggressive and ruthless in its pursuits. They bring no good to Andalia. Rather, it will serve us all to see them reduced and House Morgoth kept in check. For you all must consider one thing. His eyes settled on the Red Fort. Our king did not stop Lord Morgoth while he stopped all others. He rested back in his seat, earning a glare from Danies Royce. 
He had often discussed the disposing of House Rack and that Florian had allowed this to happen. It brought a smile to his face. Sir Damon now spoke. I find myself agreeing with his grace. Clearly it is his wish and we should all choose to respect it. Lord Brandon joined in his argument, followed by that of Septon Robert. It turned into a one-sided affair, and Lord Royce and Lord Anvil both relented on their stance. Both were rather capable, but Winton found any fear unreasonable. Lord Morgoth was smart, but he was a whoring and raging man, certainly not Danies Corbury. After this debate was settled, the prince once more took hold of the room, with his commanding tenor. Now that that is settled, I have another matter to look at. While we have beaten the West, his grace desires greater expansion in the years to come. There are two main kingdoms that he wishes for us to hold, either that of the Iron Islands or complete the conquest of the North. This time the advisers were first to speak, Gaimwood speaking up. The Ironborn have been a threat to the Riverlanders for generations. They have raided Andalia as well. They are an immediate threat. Rather than the weak north, we must break them now and retake the lands once taken by Queen Lyanna and Benfrey Highstaff. Pah! The Ironborn are a treacherous lot. They are not worth the trouble, spat back Lord Brandon with a harsh look. During the dominion of Andalia over their lands, they proved to be a dangerous and deceitful. Now the north is the heart of this kingdom. It is the lands that Enger I conquered before others. Completing this conquest will finalise his dreams and could lead to another era of greatness for our kingdom. Danies Royce was the next to make his opinions heard. I side with Lord Stark. We have a stable ally in the south with the Dustlands, and now can establish our northern border. Our veterans will not be overly expanded, and it will be an easy conquest. Morrow will be boosted, and the wolf said, it will complete a dream once held. Now Lord Anvil made his words heard. A Northman raid does less than an Ironborn raid to harm our lands. Any lord on the coast surely knows that. I am in no doubt that Lord Winton and Lord Guy can give countless reports. Our coffers will be secured if we defeat them first and foremost. I would like to make an inquiry. The voice of Septon Robert broke through the squabbling ones, his eyes overlooking the council. Both are heathens and deserve to be vanquished for their ways. Yet... It interests me to hear from someone that was inflicted heavy wounds by both of these kingdoms. Maester Simon, would you be so kind as to inform us of all the larger details? The heavy maester's chain clinked as the younger man leaned forward, fingers intertwining. Barriton has been raided before by the Ironborn. The father's fields are not unfamiliar with the raiders of the north, and one has to consider the religious factors that this house has always had. Lord Winton, do you care to share your preference? All eyes turned towards the experienced spymaster, whose lips turned into a sly smile. Those two had done that exceptionally well. He should grant them more attention. Shifting forward again, his iron hand clinked against the wood. It is certainly true that my lands have suffered from both. This very mood, my brother Benjen hung some raiders from the north, after botching their attempted incursion. But we must consider what has happened. As our kingdom now has conquest from both lands, the Iron Islands prove to be troublesome and quarrelsome, betraying us at every instance and trying to flee the yoke of Andalia. But our conquests from the north have produced homelands for dozens of houses, my own included, and the first men that remain have written themselves into the annals of Andalian history. Who here does not know the tales of Brandon Greystark? Even as an adversary, Theon Bolton's prowess is famed bar none. And, he raised his normal hand towards Brandon Greystock, one of them has elected to join us, and none can question the loyalty and valour of Brandon Stark. My lord, in all my years that I have served the council, that I have served his grace, he let the words hang in the air, making his seniority known amongst all. I have had many a discussion, but this is inane and simply not worth the effort. It must be the North, have no doubt about it. Finally, having finished this triad, he settled back into his chair, faces filled with questioning and thoughtful looks greeted him, though he knew the matter was already settled. Name the king and they all played along, and Lord Stark had been right. It was time to fulfil King Enger's dream, to fulfil the promise that Andalia was built on. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Grand Northern Kingdom of Andalia with High King Florian, the first of his 
name. So, we have two events that have fired up instantly as soon as we have tried to play. So, I was struck with nervous excitement when Master Edwin announced that the sword was nearing its completion. Today I have received the Master in my throne room. A sturdy box is in his arms, and as he opens the lid, I find it almost impossible to breathe. What will you name her, my High King? Edwin the Me Weaponsmith. Okay, um, Heart Seeker, Vengeance, Fury. Let's go for Vengeance. Would you like to give a name to your Vengeance? Um, should we just keep it as Vengeance for now, or should we change it to... I'm going to give it to Lord Mud, aren't I? So has he got a sword yet? No, he hasn't. Uh, justice and Injustice. Um, let's name it Dirt for House Mud. Something. There we go. Dirt. Okay. Uh, the old ones. Um, okay, I think that's a lunatic event, isn't it? So uh, we'll look at that in a moment. First, let's uh, give Artifact. Because we did build it for you as a reward for in the uh, wars. I want to give awards to all of the people if we can build some more things. So there we go. We will give dirt to Lord Guy Mud, which will hopefully improve his martial ability as well. He's not much of a fighter, but it will now stay in his family. Um, we do need to give something to Lord Royce, but he already has a sword, so he's already got cool armour as well. There's not really anything we can do to give Lord Royce, but we could probably give out rewards. Well, we can't give anything to Red Guard. We could give it to his son, as a reward, there isn't anything in their treasury, so we could make a weapon for Red Guard, actually. Um, finally, after such a long time, I know. I thought it was the gods talking to me all this time, but I was wrong. All my life, I've been following the way of my people, the way of the gods. Now the real gods, calling themselves old ones, have chosen me. Me. To be their champion and their harbinger. Uh, the old ones keep whispering about obedience and faithful ser ser servitude in exchange for glory, wealth and power, but abandoning my gods, everything I believed in. Is this right? Is such a promise true? Or even uh, or even gods are deceivers, I have to answer. Get out of my head. I shall not be tempted by foul, false gods. Gain a bit of high tea, lose some stress. Or what have the gods ever done for me? The old ones are the true power. Sympathy for Westerosi gods. And we could become old ones. 25% chance, uh, or we could gain the trait Lunatic, which we will get. See, it's cool to have a Lunatic King, but it just doesn't suit Florian in mind. I don't know what would have happened to Florian to make him go mad. There's like nothing really that's happened at all. So as annoying, as cool as it would be, I don't think it's right for Florian. So get out of my head. There are too many things to do, too many things that worries me. I've gained the stress trait. That's okay. We're getting stressed instead, which could have an effect. Wow, we've got 200,000 men there, there. Very impressive. I think like literally all of them, um, Florian's vassals, absolutely adore him. Though, look as you can see, everything's in the green. Several hundreds there. Um, ah, and here are some of those courtiers. If you're in the Discord server, you will recognise. I did ask and call out to you guys in the Discord server for some names, and I have got some for those. So we're going to give those names to these guys now. Cleos was going to be Cleos Tall Tree. So, Cleos, hello. We will grant you a knighthood. Rise, Sir Cleos. And we will raise you to nobility as well. And we will now give you your new name, which was Tall Tree. There we go, a nice tree on black. So, just so the tree stands out. So, there we go. We have Sir Cleos Tall Tree. Let's arrange a marriage for you. You need a marriage. I don't think we have really anybody in our court around your age, do we? Um, oh, we do have Shira Hornbreaker, who wouldn't be too bad. And we have this Viperin Bastard as well, as well as a Dark Blade. So we've got a couple of courtiers, actually. 1870. Let's go for the Hornbreaker girl, shall we? There we go. Set that marriage up for you. Um, and the other guy that arrived in our court that we've already sent was Alistair, who has already had a name. I think it was Alistair Crowley, if I can find him. It's a character that I've been keeping my eye on for a while now. These were all random courtiers around Andalia that I've moved to our court. Not touched their traits at all. These are just the most impressive characters I could find in Andalia. I moved to our court and give names for them. Just rather than wasting these characters. I mean, look at this guy, Alistair, who we've now named Crowley. Crowley, 
Red Crow on white. He's a formidable fighter, a decent commander. He's got the quick trait, a duelist. He's still a squire. I don't think we can grant him a knighthood. I have set up a marriage for him and we've done his, but there are a few more who will be moving to our court soon. So we'll wait for those to arrive. I think there was five in total. Um, Zargana Shycross has um, had history of Rhinish Wars removed from his treasury. I'm guessing he's probably died then or something. Peace with you. I accept your invitation, Sir Brian. And then we've got another one, right? So, Sir Brian, um, we will raise you to nobility as well. And that's actually a really nice sigil. Did um, anyone... I know that we've got a name for Brian, which I'm going to check now. And it was Bronze Ridge. Did we have a sigil for... Bronze Ridge, because if not, I really, really like that sigil, to be honest. Really nice. Did we have... Do we have one for Bronze Ridge? Let me just check. No, we'll stick with that sigil then, because I really like that sigil. Looks really nice. There we go. So, Bronze Ridge, we need to arrange a marriage for you. You're 35, so you're a little bit older anyway. So... I'm not going to go on that page. Let's have a look who we've got for you in our actual corks. There was a couple, wasn't there? A couple of younger ones. We could go for an older one for you, but we want you to carry on your hat. We do have a cast by hand who's a bastard. She's 23, so maybe she'd be better because you're slightly older. We do have the dark blade girl as well. We'll go with um, we'll go with the fire hand bastard. And then we've got Sir Jorma, who's another decent guy. He's not the best of fighters. He's a sisterman as well. We'll grant you a knighthood. Make you a knight. You're a decent fighter. And we will raise you to... Nobilita. Oh, wow. So, Jorma, I, I kind of don't want to change that. I, we did have a name for this guy, but I quite... I really like that sigil. And I like the name as well, Sir Jorma Wave. So, I feel bad not for using the name that was recommended by you guys. But I really... I really like that. We're going to have to use that other name for somebody else, I think, then. Because I do... I really, really like that. I really like that. We're going to keep him as he is. I like that. Sorry. I do apologise. We'll use the other name for somebody else, but I don't really want to... I don't want to not use that name. I think that name's too good to miss up on. And yeah, as you can see, look, decent commanding traits, a giant, he's shrewd, trained fighter and knight, other decent traits, 16 years old. Ridiculous. Um, so let's arrange a marriage for you. Um, we still had some younger ones, didn't we, in our court? We've got the Vipering Girl and we've got a Dark Blade. Um, neither have got inheritable traits, have they? So let's go for let's go for the Dark Blade for you. Both got that ginger hair. Get those ginger children go. And I think that might have been all of them. We've had dirt removed from our treasury. It has been moved over. So we've got some nice courtiers here who will probably make some nice bodyguards as well, as well as nice commanders for the future. And here's the last one of Silvervale. Now, that is his name already. He's an older man, so we do need to find you a marriage. Um, maybe one of the younger brides will do for you if we have a little look. Was there any older ones? There was 17, 20... Oh, that's... Yeah, we'll just have to go for the Vipering Girl for you. She's going to have to take the sacrifice for everybody else and marry the old guy. We are going to keep the name and sigil as it was. The only thing that we decided to do was to change the colour. As we're Silver Veil, we're going to go for a nice Silver Lion. And I think it was on a blue background we were going to go for. Something a bit different. Um, yeah, that looks nice. I like that. Do we go for the Black Lions? No, the Silver. The Silver Lion looks good. Maybe on a slightly lighter... No, it doesn't look good on the lighter blue. It just doesn't seem to stand out so much on the darker blue unless we make the lion darker, but we wanted it silver to match the silver veil. Do you know what? No, that, that's, no, that's all right. That looks nice. And there we go. We've sorted out a marriage for him as well. Uh, peace be with you. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Lady Marissa and Prince Enger. Yes, we're going to send Prince Enger to Lady Marissa, who is a very impressive diplomat. Oh, her husband is imprisoned by her herself. Okay. That's a worrying sign. He is a lunatic, though, apparently. And we have sent our grandson, Engar, who's got some decent diplomacy, so we're going to send him there. So I think that is all of the courtiers, apart from the weddings that need sorting for each of them. I am going to name several of them to be our bodyguards. Lord Paramount, Armand of the Torrentine, revoke the Lordship of Yornwood. Okay. Um, or Ironwood, sorry. Bless one you and your house. I accept your gracious invitation. And, uh, oh yeah, we'll join your court forthwith. I found a decent-ish young seven random seven star i just invited him to court nothing amazingly amazing about him but why not let's get some 
of these guys into our court. Let's a range of marriage for you. Someone around your age, you're only 16. He's got decent intrigue. He's a nar he's a squire. He's a trained fighter. Why not? Let's bring him into our court. You are of noble blood, though, so if we can find you someone around your age who is also of noble blood. We've got a creed there, a creed twin, another creed. Oh, there, so they are the twins. Both 16. Wow, she's got very good diplomacy. Let's go for her. She's not the heir either, so yeah, we'll go for her for you. Can we knight you? I don't think we can because you're technically already a squire to someone, so somebody else has to knight you. I don't know if there was any more. Um, what other... We can call the court out of hiding. I didn't even know we was in hiding, but apparently we are. Well, I'm pretty sure that no one is in hiding, but we'll call um, we'll call the court out of hiding anyway. Uh, recently, I've noticed the pitiful state of my daughter, Princess Mina. We'll call for a physician at once. Let's call the court out of hiding, even though they're not in hiding. So, no idea what that's all about. Um, I do want to build some other weapons and stuff to give out to the families who served as well in the war. We are a charitable king and a kind king, so I'd like to reward those lords if possible. Right, what I wanted to do though is look onto our bodyguards now and just change some of these out. We've we've got some decent bodyguards, but we've got better ones now. A new High Septon. So, Captain of the Household Guard is currently Sir Harif Rack, who I do like. He is our friend. He's a decent fighter, but he's... Mm, we could keep him, I suppose, but he's a drunk. Not had any kids yet with his lady wife. His lady wife is in hiding for some reason. Um, let's have a look. Who are our other bodyguards? Lord Edrian of the Stone Shore. Well, he's a lord and he's a poor fighter, so we will remove him for one of our new bodyguards. We'll go for Alistair Crowley as one of our new King's Guard. Um, who is Sir Eddard Snow? He's a skilled fighter and he is our kinsman. We'll keep him. We'll keep him. He is related to us, so we'll keep him. Sir Pate Stone. I'm pretty sure he's old. He's a skilled fighter, but he's pretty old. Been around for a long time. He's in hiding anyway. Let's replace him then with one of our new bodyguards. We will go with... Who have we got? Sir Cleos. Tall tree. We've got Danies um, already. Lord Danies is one of our bodyguards. He is our cousin. I feel like we should keep him around, but then again, I'm not sure. We'll... Let's remove Sir Harif Rack as well then. He's a drunk. He's getting old. Let's remove, replace him with one of these younger, more frightening people. We'll go with um, Sir Jorma Waves. Captain of the Household Guard. We will go with... Ah, so the captain can be a different member. That's good. Okay, so Captain of the Household Guard. We will give to... Do we give it to one of these older guys instead that have just come into our court? We've got Sir Brian of Bronze Ridge, who is slightly older. He is craven, charitable, paranormal. Maybe not. Um, could give it to Jorman. But I don't think I will. Okay, Renessa Seven Star is very impressive. We'll give that role to... Yeah, we'll give it to Sir Brian. Why not? Just so we can get all of these guys in Waters Tall Tree. We will replace Lord Danies with one of the other do we have another new guy brian's the thing so we don't want to replace him i may just leave him as our bodyguard for now then i'm pretty sure there was another one but apparently we can't have him okay never mind so we'll just keep the ones that we've got for now i don't think we can hold a tawny or anything as such for a little while we can hire a new banker so why not let's do that we have wilbert the banker hopefully that'll help the bank continue to make more wealth I did notice that the guy that we had as a banker, and it's one of your guys' custom characters, I believe it's Ellie's custom character. Um, gold? Was it Goldmark? Something like that, wasn't it? Um, let's see if I can find him. He's still in our court somewhere. Not Fangman, Goldmark, yeah. He was currently travelling because he is working at the bank, yeah. So he's actually become a banker, which is pretty cool. Brandon Stark and Passage of the Dead added to his treasury. What have we got here? Is this to marry Pia again? No, decline. Pia is not going anywhere i may get her a matrimonial marriage just so she can have children but she is going to be our future spy master as we well know she's very very impressive robert Perrin brought a favor from our good Perrin. okay so we do it would be nice to have a little bit of peace now we crushed the south as we know as our manpower now over two hundred thousand. wow insanely impressive the west is at war so we've got nothing to worry about with them we've got our buffer state in between so there's nothing to worry about there either 
which is good. Mercenaries, can we... Um, where are the Sons of Enger? Can we send... We can replace the Mercenary Captain, which I would like to do, because it shouldn't be you anyway. So let's replace Mercenary Captain with... Uh, we've got Silver Veil. He could be interesting to do it, but I, would, I probably will give it to one of our sons, actually, when they get older. So, yeah, well, we won't do that for now. Can we not send stuff to the Mercenary Company? Do we do that on our Intrigue instead? Because it would be nice to send some more supplies to them. Maybe because we haven't got much wealth at the moment either, unfortunately. But, yeah, they're, they're quite strong manpower-wise. Three and a half thousand men. One of the best by the looks of it, actually. So that, that is impressive. The Sons of Engar. So I'm glad that they've become a decent a decent uh, company. And Betrothed can marry Morgan Greystark, who's pretty impressive. He is... Who's he going to marry? He's going to marry Princess Maya of Andalia, our niece, who's 14 and only got one trait. But she, that's a bit, bit, bit shit, really, isn't it? Uh, but yes, let's get that marriage done. And we've got a message. Oh, it's just the same message from the Greystock saying that they want to wed those two, which is fine. Do we still have our crown loyalists? Wow, insanely big. But we do have an independence threat from the they, uh, from the sisters. So, um, yeah, let's send our spy master there to, um, hmm. scheme and we can't we're not going to send you there because you're currently busy god everyone on the council absolutely loves us apart from our own brother and the population in gravesome has been converted to faith of the seven very good to hear we're literally just waiting for this to end up here this um truce that we've got which is in another year and we can then swallow up the remainder of the north an agreement has been reached with Lord Fearmore to see Morgan, Greystock, and Maya Seven Star wed, and now the diary. Uh, we'll give them play. Wow, four hundred in gold. Um, yeah, we'll give them the customary amount. It puts us in debt, but it won't be for long. We'll soon get ourselves back out of debt. Is he independent? No, technically not. So we can't go to war. Your Septon Robert reports that Master Jonas of Sevensport has been humbled by your endless generosities to the poor. That's fine. Let's pull things along. Get ourselves out of debt. Prince Enger Seven Star has been a Leon Label servant. Um, I think his servants warrant a grant of land. No, because I don't even think he's got an heir. He's got a daughter who we've just married off to a Grey Stark. Oh, look, Prince Enger's a fat homosexual now. It's spreading everywhere. Um, well, a Ranger reward. We'll send him a bit of gold. He hates his anyway. I'm not giving him land. Benjamin Firehand. Oh, no. Benjamin Firehand was unfortunately killed in a tawny jazz by Lord Brandon V of Winterfell. Really like Benjamin. All his sons did die in the hand. Who is his daughter? Lesla Firehand, who's paranoid and ruthless. Brave. So she's a typical Firehand, it would seem. And he did have another daughter as well, Jancia Firehand. Um, can we arrange a marriage for you? Do we have anyone? No. That's fine. That's. Oh, I really like Benjamin Firehand. What a way for him to go. Such an awesome character. He dies in a freaking tawny accident. And one child lacking an education focus, Princess Alice, who's hmm, learning in diplomacy wise. Let's get that then. Your educator, do we get you another educator? Let's assign, assign a guardian for you. Someone with good diplomacy. Let's send you to Fearmore Greystock. Why not? Brandon Stark has had ice removed from their treasury. Oh, Brandon Stark has died as well. Died a natural death, so he killed Benjamin Firehand in a joust and then died and Lord Jossart the Bewitched interesting name is now the new lord can we can't send a gift because we've got no get money um, okay but that means that we do need a new advisor now who have we got that's a loyalist we've got our son we've got Maynard Morgath who's a loyalist we've got so many loyalists we've got the Grey Starks. We'll go with Greystarks because we had a Stark. At least we've got someone from the further north. We've got someone who is of the old gods as well then on the council. And we do now have a commander position open. So let's have a look at the best commander we've got. We've got Silvervale who's a siege leader. Leads from the rear. He's a trick. Yeah, we'll go for that guy. He's pretty cool. We don't have a siege leader, do we? So we could probably replace some of these. Damwell the Just who's okay. But we've got better commanders than you now. So we'll replace you with... Alistair Crowley. 
Lord Guy of Seaguard. He is our friend, though, isn't he, Lord Mud? Would upset him if we removed him, but as I say, we've got better commanders now. We'll go with Sir Jorman Waves. Jormar Waves. And Winton. Sorry, Lord Firehand. You're probably not going to be very happy about it, but we've got better commanders. You've already got your position on the council. Uh, dear High King Florian of Andalia, I hereby invite you to the wedding of Morgan Greystock and Maya Sevenstar. Of course, I will travel to the wedding of my niece, of course, bounding our two houses. Lord Wintermyron is upset that you removed his command Was he uh, when he was only just recently granted it. He's our friend, so I think he'll get over it pretty quickly, hopefully. Hopefully he doesn't plot to kill us or anything because of that. Um, age of 58, your acquaintance, Commander Simon... Okay, that doesn't really... Had his, did he had his bows ripped out. Had bows torn out on the order... Oh, ouch. Doesn't really concern us, but... Pretty nasty way to go. Lord Fiamor granted us warmly to the wedding. Uh, fine of gold was served and the most lovely music was played throughout the whole night. The ceremony between Morgan and Meyer and the Grand Feast shall be held upon the morrow. Thank you for having us. Probably need to have a loan from our own bank just to get us out of debt. Now my Seven Star and Morgan Greystock stand before a heart tree of the old gods to take up a solemn vow of marriage. The great lords and ladies of Greycliffs look on as he drapes the arms of House Greystock around the bride to finally seal their marriage. And now let the feast begin. I believe that one of your vassals can be discouraged from associating with conspiratorial factions if the proper leverage is obtained. Let's have a look at you. Let's obligate the vassal. He's only a young lad. I enjoyed Lord Illifer's company, and we talked in the garden for several hours. We both fell asleep. Maybe before all of that brown ale, maybe from all that brown ale we drank, and we've become friends. As in Lord Oxter, another drunk, another fat drunk. A daughter was born to Garth Goldmark, and a reigner named M Masha Goldmark, who is sickly, which is not good. He's already lost one child at birth. Uh, while carrying out my duties for the Bank of the Crown, I have met Keyholder Joseph on several occasions. These encounters have ended well. One would be hard-pressed to find a more unsympathetic character. I suspect he's uh, spreading lies behind my back. Oh, never ended well. Uh, we'll confront him and reveal his dishonour. We'll become bitter rivals. Yeah, we'll do that rather than let the bank take a hit. Uh, do not speak to me of obligations and duties. I may be your vassal, but that does not make me your slave. How dare you? I can prison you, but we've got a pretty decent chance of that. Um, and Lord Morgan Hornbreaker was unfortunately killed in a tawny joust by Lord Osgood of Longsister. So we could, could actually imprison you. Have a decent chance of it, but our tyranny and fear will go up. But so, hmm, yeah, we won't. We won't do that. If you become more of a problem, we will. The feast is winding down, and now only the bedding remains. Morgan and Meyer are stripped of all garments by the revelers, who make many a bawdy joke along the way. They are then finally bundled into their bedchamber, where they are finally left alone. A fine tradition. A fine tradition of the North. I think Florian would be all up for that tradition. Something happening in the Iron Islands. Doesn't really affect us. Uh, the smallest spider makes my friend Athos squeal and run for cover. Uh, this has started to worry me. To be fair, it would make me do that as well. Fear is the mind killer. Loses the trait Craven. Could gain the trait Brave. Uh, gains the trait Content. Loses the trait Craven. Uh, let's go for the last one. We'll lose Craven and hopefully gain Brave. Let's see if we... He lost Craven, but he didn't He didn't gain Brave, but at least he lost Craven. We don't really want to imagine that. Lord Fearmore's wedding is over, and it's time to begin the long way home. After the music, the entertainment, and the warmth, the real world suddenly feels cold and hostile. Got another proposal for marriage, which I'm going to decline. Do you know what? Should we just find Pia a match? Matrimonial marriage. Someone around her own age from our kingdom will do. Doesn't matter if he's noble or not, but I'm just getting really fed up with the uh, constant... Request, we've got a Templeton, he's a lunatic, he's got Valyrian features, I don't want that. Oh, a Biome here, who's a giant. We also have another giant here, but he's a wildling, so we won't go for that. We've got this Northman, though, he's very tempting just because of that giant trait. Um, Yeah, we'll go for him. Why not? Where has he gone? Biome, wasn't it? We've got this, oh no, he's Valyrian, we don't want any Valyrians. Yeah, we'll go for you. Send. Just to stop that. Um... Well, ask politely this time then, because trying to obligate him didn't work for us, did it? So we'll try and do that instead. 
May you live in harmony and contentment. I have accepted your suggestion that P and Byam get married. All children of the dynasty will be a th uh, of the union will be a third dynasty. He's arrived at our court, Lord Reva. Yeah, I don't care about the Iron Islands. I'm not interested. Don't care what's happening in Yeti either. Uh, do not speak to me of obligations. Okay, you're becoming quite problematic, aren't you? Um, plotting to kill or kidnap isn't really Florian's thing. I don't want to get Arterian any up because everybody loves Florian, so I don't want to ruin that. Lord Martin of Seaguard died of an infected wound, so who is the new Lord of Seaguard? We have Lord Christopher Malister, so it's passed to his brother, whose son is at the Night's Watch, and his other son is dead, so his heir is his daughter. Okay, well that's quite worrying for the Malister family, considering they used to have two branches and a huge family. It looks like they're whittling down. A daughter was born to Sir Eddard Snow and Zia Dirt, named Peony Buxhorn. Okay. Wait, because it's going to give him a random name, isn't it? Because he's a bastard. Robert Parent would in a favour. Osmond Erinstar died of the pox. Nothing too exciting for us. We've only got less than a year now, I think, until we can go to war with the North, which is what we're waiting for, really. Uh, young Athos is developing an arbitrary streak. It's showing more clearly every day. He should show more ambition. He becomes ambitious. It's fine. I don't want more competition. No, let's get him get ambitious. Ambitious is a good trait. Oh, it's not good, but it is good at the same time. It will give him a nice boost. Uh, Bera Florentas recognised the dire financial situation I am in. She has sent me an offer to buy some lands of mine. She will buy Owen's hold for 100, 100 gold. I don't think so, love. Uh, the coffers are empty, but the steps are rich. Maybe I should see set properties to repay my debts. We gain 100 gold. We lose 100 piety. We have got a lot of piety, though. Compromise with them to find the money? We actually gain piety that way and lose a bit of prestige. We've got a hell of a ton of prestige. We'll go for the top one. We can afford... Uh, yeah, we can afford to take a bit of gold from the church. Lord Brandon of the Old has inherited the castle of Northwold from Master Rogus Snow. Okay, the Umbers should soon be our vassals. Anything else that we can do on here at the moment? Not really. Um, well, obligating and asking politely doesn't work. And why can't we just threaten him instead? Ambrose was laying in bed, resting with his wife with orders to not be disturbed when the news had come to him. The knocks on the door annoyed him. You are aware I left orders to not be disturbed, he said sternly. What could it possibly be at this hour? Tell me. The knight guarding him spoke up. It's Maester Timothy, my lord, and he says it's urgent. Ambrose sighed. Very well, you can send him in. And it had not taken him long to arrive. He had hurried up the stairs with haste. Maester Timothy, not among the thinnest of men, arrived in his bedroom out of breath, red-faced and puffing. Lady Gristle, Ambrose's wife, was the first to react. Maester Timothy, are you all right? What is wrong? She asked as he struggled to find words, as he tried to catch his breath. It's... it's... it's grave news, grave news. His face, still red from all the running, had a grim and sad expression. A confused Ambrose watched how his maester slowly recovered his breath, with a face full of emotion. It's about your son. Uh, my prince. I received a letter sealed with the red wax sigil of House Redfort. Little Enger. I'm... I'm sorry, your grace. He is dead. Shock filled the room. Ambrose stared at his maester in disbelief, while Gristle started crying. Ambrose in disbelief screamed. It can't be. My son is but seven. I do not believe it. It cannot be. The first tears were rolling on his cheeks. He embraced his wife and held her tight, trying to comfort her. Both of them were in tears. Finally, with a lump in his throat, he finally managed to ask his maester about his boy. How? How? My anger. How did he die? His tone was full of grief. Pneumonia, his maester answered softly. Lady Redford offered her condolences with her letter and will be on her way personally, escorting her ward back to the Eyrie, once the Silent Sisters are done. She and her family are grieving. She proclaimed that as a mother, it is as if she lost her own. Ambrose had hardly heard the words and asked, Why were we not informed? Timothy then told him the letter stated that the sickness had struck quickly. 
and now a good while later, he stood here in the great hall of the Eyrie, with his wife looking at his son. He hardly recognised him any more, thinner and embalmed, no shred of life remaining in him. He had been so lively, he said aloud, both of them crying while they held one another tight. They had never loved one another, but their son had bonded them. As they comforted one another, Ambrose recalled the precious memories he had with his son. His birth, the trip south to the Eyrie, where he had held him in his arms as they overlooked the Vale of Arran and the Giant's Lance. He was so precious, he said, while he looked his wife in the eyes. He had not been gone from the Eyrie for a year, and he had already returned home. That had pained Ambrose most. Anger had been sad the day he set off for the Red Fort for the foster ship. I just wish I could see him smile one last time. We'll try to obligate him again. At the age of seven, your grandson, Anger Seven Star, died of pneumonia. Oh no. That absolutely sucks. He's only just gone up north, but it happened, so our grandson is dead. We don't have any other grandsons yet, so that makes our heir Ambrose and then our heir. Uh, Anger the Elder, who is impressive. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind him becoming king. If I'm perfectly honest. Thank you for reminding me of my duty. Oh, perfect. He's finally stepped in line. Is that that faction gone? Yes, it is. Just the Crown Loyalists, which is ridiculously, ridiculously powerful. Uh, Armand Draxler is now known as the Rash. Okay, that's fine. A former Lyseni magistrate has offered to tutor my ward for a price, Princess Alice. Uh, away with you, Lyseni, or we can pay him 57 gold and she's going to gain stuff. So, yeah, we'll go for that. Why not? Um, sadly, Alice has become greedy. I guess I, I guess I have to keep checking my purse every day now. Never mind. Probably, well, it's always worth the gamble. You never know. You never know what you might get. An emirate from the High Septon has come to our court to announce that we have an anathem. Oh, to everything that is holy, we have been excommunicated. Fuck off. Bit, bit over the top, isn't it? Well over the top. I should have just gone for the compromise, but never mind. Um, wow, Maynard. Maynard's pretty decent of the Warrior's Way. He's proved himself in battle as well by winning in the Warrior's Way. So why not? Yeah, let's make him a, a commander. Why not? Oh, not indeed. I don't think there's any laws or anything like that that we can change at present either, is there? So, uh, my young ward has finished our educations in the way of court and sabership. It turned out less, well, less than expected. Yeah, well, we knew it was going to anyway. It never made any sense, but we didn't want to offend um, Winton Firehand, did we? So, we just went along with it. But that does mean that we can now get a new squire, which is good. So, we will probably go for that. So, we do have Aphis High Oak. Can't grant him a knighthood, yeah, but he's done okay. He's not. He's done okay. He's not done too bad. Let's find ourselves a a new squire. It's got to be Marshall. We could take on Anger ourselves, but I think he's gone for a stewardship focus, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, he's got better stewardship. Um, let's look for somebody else who's a decent one. A Bolton. That would be interesting, but I don't think they'd accept anyway. But they're not. They're too old, really, aren't they? One, one who's a bit. Oh, Maynard Greystart. Oh, he's a green. Interesting. Green Dreams have got an eagle. Quick. A bear. Um, Not really massively martial. Oh. Alara Bolton of the Dreadfort. A genius. Poor fighter. She's very good in martial. Yeah, let's... I doubt that he will accept, but let's try. Yeah, I didn't think they'd accept because of the uh, religious differences. Never mind. Got another genius here. No, I don't know who she is. I'd like to take one from one of the bigger houses if possible someone of a d oh wow look at this guy bolton geniuses are just everywhere i don't think he's going to accept either i don't even know why i'm trying to be honest yeah uh we've got a lancer there poor fight oh maribold roseheart roseheart's always turn out well don't they let's uh take him as our ward then for ourselves our new squire instead of the other roseheart that we had before perfect and it has been accepted perfect he's Currently 10 years old. Hopefully we can do something about that poor fighter. Because he's got the brawny, the strong and the giant traits. So he's got those other trusty Rosehearts traits. He's the Lord's youngest son. So we 
could maybe give him lands instead. We did want to give John Roseheart lands instead, his other son, but we couldn't do that because he got landed in the end, which was unfortunate. And Princess Kyra needs a folk. Wow, she's a skilled fighter. Wow. Being trained by Lord Why Roseheart, what do you expect? Um, she's going to be marrying Athos High Oak. Um, well, it's got to be martial education, of course, hasn't it? And winter is coming already. That, that was a quick turnaround. And, of course, we will spend highly to get Princess Kyra the best that we can. We're going to have to take our loan to get ourselves out of um, debt, aren't we? Um, take out a loan. The Bank of the Crown. Wow, that is a lot of gold. Take the same from Valeria, but obviously we don't want to do that. We'll take out that big bad loan from the Bank of the Crown. We'll be able to soon pay it back. It won't take us too long. We're literally just waiting for the invasion that we can make. Um, Your Grace, sometime now I've been in the employ of Lord Osgood, but now I seek a better station. Let's have a look at you. You are quite a decent Septon, actually. You're cruel, though. Who is our current Septon? He's been our Septon for a long time, hasn't he? Septon Robert, so um, no, we'll, we'll keep Septon Robert. I would feel harsh if I was to force him out, to be honest. Lord Edric of Misselwood has inherited the Lordship of Misselwood from Lord Bradamir of Misselwood, who has died from too much drinking. So we now have the amazing Lord Edric um, Rook in charge of Misselwood. This guy is... In oh, he's a gardener as well now. Very nice. This guy's insane. He is absolutely insane. Why are you not important? You should be important. He doesn't have a very good opinion of us, though, unfortunately, which sucks. Hopefully we can change that. It's just a shame that he isn't the... Um, the High Lord, so that we could make use of him. Then again, we've got Sir Danies Royce, haven't we, as our um, Master at Arms, so I think he's actually slightly better than Edric Rook anyway, so yeah, it's not really... He probably wouldn't get used anyway, just because Sir Danis is so so good himself. Yeah, 27. He's actually the same Marshal. But we know that he's one of our most loyal friends. And someone cashed out from the bank when they died. Because they've got no heirs. That's fine. Oh, we've got a civil war kicking off in the sisters. What is going on down here then? Let's have a look. Uh, Lord Aaron of the sisters is defending against Lord Byron of Sunderland. And the second sisters will... Well, that's fine. I'm not going to get involved in it. Have you got two lordships here? No, House Borrell. House Sunderland. House Longthorpe. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't mind too much if you got unlanded. We could always give House Wave the sisters at one point. Uh, the war against the tyranny of King Timus the Kind has ended. Okay, the reins were taken in. Okay, so it looks like the Lannisters have managed to win that. Lord Ian of Grey Glen has died. Lord Tollet, that's fine. Uh, Lady Catelyn Stoneheart. What? Okay, that, what are the chances of that? What are the chances of that? That is awesome. Uh, Lady Catelyn Stoneheart of Tendering. House Hawthorne. Love that sigil. Um, it's gone for an independence war. And so is the Lord of Fair Isle. Wow, okay, so it's all kicking off in the south. Troubling news from the Battle of Sweet Sister, Your Grace. Your Bannerman Lord Erin Redstone has been captured. He was bested in direct single combat by the enemy commander, Master Osmond. Okay, so it looks like he is... Um, going to be overthrown. News has reached court that a claimant to my title is Kareen is hiring men for an attack against me. And Aaron. Interesting. Ah, oh, whose daughter we're marrying. That's why they've all got the Aaron features down in the Blackwood lands. Okay, so the Redstones have... Uh, not the Redstones, the Sunderlands are going to have won back the sisters. Lord Athabel of Riverin is giving... Yeah, I don't care. I need to actually sort out Riverin and give that to one of our new houses, actually. Which I will do off screen. I need to remember to do that. I keep forgetting to do that. Lady Steelheart has died. Does that mean that the Morgoths have now inherited Crow's Baron? Because I'm pretty sure a Morgoth's son. Oh, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same one. That's okay. Yeah, but these are all Lord, Lord Morgoth's sons. So the Morgoths are gaining quite a bit of power lately, which is quite scary, especially considering their Lord is a lunatic. He's now a High Lord, soon to have two High Lordships. Lord Rain was beheaded by the orders of King Timos of the South. Lord Harbage of the Dryden has given me bizarre and repulsive evidence concerning someone's sexual preferences. Sarah Sevenstar, half King's woman. No idea who she is, who she married to. Harry and Steelheart. Um, she's a lunatic with gonorrhea. I don't care. Okay. 
King Walter the Flower has used out the title Lordship of Rook's Rest from Jared Holt. Amanda Royce died a sickly infant. That sucks. Sorry, Lord Royce, for that. Is Lord Royce wounded? What happened to you? Wounded and stressed. Lord Commander Affender of the Night's Watch has inherited the command of sh the Shadow Tower. Okay, I wonder who the new Lord of the Shadow Tower would be. Cool if it was somebody from Andalia. Ironborn person was killed by a wild beast. The Fossaway Rebellion in the Reach has been took down by the 11 year old Gardener Queen. And oh, and here we go. We've got a war kicking off. Queen Corain of Mountain and Vale has declared Queen Corain's claim on Mountain and Vale. 22,000 men. Well, that's not going to do much for us, is it? Where um, the Lords will surely honour their obligations. Right, so where is this host attacking from? Army of Elston Stonehenge Peasant Revolt. Oh, that's in there. There. So where is this host? Where are you currently leading troops, my lady? Uh, leading troops in Duskendale. Interesting. Um, well, you're going to attack the Vale. Why not call up our Vale army to stop you in your tracks got a lot of manpower from the Vale wow look at the Royce land I don't think we'll need any more than just the Vale troops to defend their own lands if I'm perfectly honest steel hearts count as well as the cold waters and the anvils that is a lot of manpower just from that region and there's bound to be enough supply limit 34,000 supply limit here what's the supply limit in hearts home the same runestone Supply limit of 40,000. Wow. It's probably the most, isn't it? Or what's about Gultown? 50,000. Yeah, let's meet in Gultown. And the host shall be led by King Florian himself, along with Walder Roseheart. And do we have any. any. Um, veilment? Let's go for Ambrose. Let's get Ambrose some some knowledge but we'll win the episode with the start of this war kicking off once we give princess mina a focus she's very good intrigue good in diplomacy playful diplomacy affectionate diplomacy willful intrigue uh we'll go for we'll go for that um but yeah we will now end this episode here guys so thank you all whoa where were we going where are we going uh thank you all so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed please don't forget to leave a like and comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to join the discord loads more of you have been joining the discord lately we already have a huge community there but it's getting bigger and bigger every day with fans of the knights vandalia so we'd love to have as many of you there as possible um yeah where we talk about the knights vandalia a lot so hopefully i'll see you all very soon You are my council! Council! Florian Sevenstar, first of his name, was incandescent with rage. He had not attended the council sessions of late, his mind elsewhere. However, war had reared its head once more. He relished conflict, but this was a different time. The self-righteous Septon of Snow had declared an anathema on his person, refusing him from Sept and barring him from the gods. It was not an ideal time to leave the capital, but he was once more to be dragged away. Well... What say you, Winton? You who pride yourself for knowing everything. All of your spies and you manage to let an invasion slip by you? How? Florian now reached breathlessly for a pentoshi brandy and gulped. It was an oversight, your grace. If we act now, Winton Firehand spoke. Information was his trade, and he was apologetic with himself as the king was. An oversight? Florian said calmly, bobbing his head in sarcasm, lips pursed. An oversight? He bellowed and threw the brandy, its contents strewn across the floor, along with his glass. His fingers now found the lord they named the Imperius. If we act now, we will wait until our enemies are at our shores, and then we act, he shouted. I assure your grace, Winton said. It was uncharacteristic for the lord of Barriton to not hold any conversation by its throat. He was truly pinned against the wall now. Ah, I do away with assurances of lords. I wipe my arse with them. Florian sat down, still breathless. The hand of the king, Brother Enger, now spoke with repose, as he reached across to the map of the continent. According to Lord Winton's reports, the Arangel has landed here, in King Walter's lands. Enger pointed to the Dustlands. Winton then found his voice again. My reports suggest that Queen Corrine, as she styles herself, has some 20,000 men under her banner. Cell swords. No house has declared for her. 
not even her king in Ruffermond, nor her mother by marriage, Lady Coldwater. Your grace is much loved in the Vale, as you know, the fat Lord Anvil spoke. He speaks the truth. The Arons are despised. When Enger landed, we had Mathis Aron, the Magister overthrown. Sir Damon Redfort, the youngest of the council, said. Don't forget Osric the Mad, who took a Septon vows and thus his sister inherited, the infamous Queen Rowena. The Vale men do not have fond memories of Aron rule. Even if your grace was not loved, he would not find it a struggle to gain men to oppose the return of the Falcons. We remember. Danish Royce had been brought up on tales of the tyranny of Queen Rowena, the Aron King's burning of Gultown. He knew the temper of his people, and that of the other Vale men. Salvation was brought with Enger the Second, as they wished not to return to the days where death and uncertainty ruled. Very well, Florian said. Send words to the Lord of the Vale. Let the knights muster their charge. If this Aaron Queen wants bloodshed, she will bloody herself against her own subjects. Light seal rock and send the ravens. Florian paused and pushed away from the table, scanning the chamber and the men that sat in it. I have an example to make. <laughs>